My name is Claire Williamson, and this is my episode of A Baptism of Fire. Welcome to my documentary, A Baptism of Fire. There is an ancient principle that to move from one octave of your life to another octave, certain things have to happen. If you think about an octave in music, each octave plays at a completely different sound, at a completely different frequency. And effectively, what we are doing as we move through these certain things is ascending in consciousness, changing in frequency. If you really want to create an entirely different experience of life, you have to vibrate at an entirely different frequency. And there are challenges, rites of passage that are gonna come with this shift. For the shaman, this would have been their journey to overcome fear, to awaken their lion's heart, to become fearless so that they could truly step into dynamic receptivity with spirit, develop true obedience to divine will and be in response for the betterment of humanity. In Atlantis, the warriors would travel to different cities to learn to go through certain emotions so that they could become stronger. And they would spend as much time as they needed in the city to go through the challenges, to be able to overcome this emotion. In the rainforest, we see the young sent out into the forest to learn to fare on their own, learn to eat from the forest, work in symbiosis with the forest and bring that wisdom back to their tribe. In this episode of A Baptism of Fire, I want to share with you the challenge that I went through as I took my beautiful three clients to best-selling authors to a massive step up in their authority and light leadership. Behind my smiles and celebrations as they continued to win, Something very big was happening on a personal level. But first, let's cut to our intro. My name is Claire Williamson, AKA the Millionaire Shower Woman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program the Unleashed Awakened Wealth Mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way, and I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and opportunities. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns default expectations, and all of your programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire. maybe seven or eight years old and watching my dad in the kitchen severely stressed we lived in a big house I went to a private school on the surface we appeared to have it all within the four walls of the house 
things looked very different. My mum has struggled with mental illness since I was, possibly since I was born. And I think my dad was struggling to hold on to this wealth that he had created, this successful business that he had made. I had this memory come back of him standing in the kitchen and I was standing behind him watching him and this intense feeling of it's okay dad I can take this from you I can I can wear this burden don't cry dad everything's gonna be okay and what I realized this year was that energetically I took this bag of burdens from my dad and I placed it across my own shoulders. When you lead a light business, a heart-centered business, a business driven by your immense desire to make a difference in the world, to, to help people, it is really easy to always wanna go the extra mile to do that. I made a lot of money very fast in my business by selling very high ticket programs. And what I began to realize as I pivoted my business and I wanted to help more people was that this high ticket made what I did that was so incredibly powerful and was making such a difference to people completely inaccessible to most. And I wanted to change that. I wanted everybody to be able to experience the kind of wins that you have seen Carmen, Judith, Vicky take. And so I made the decision to change up my value ladder, to offer way more in installments, and to also open the first phase of my Awakened Wealth Blueprint absolutely free. I also made a substantial investment into bringing a publishing house into my company so that I could begin to publish authors as part of this blueprint because of the power of a book to put you in front of your ideal clients and the power of the system that I've created behind the book to close those ideal clients in as little as five days. As the book project rolled along and Vicky, Carmen, Judith began to write their chapters, began to create this system, was a bunch of people that I had really tried to help by offering really low installments, really extended plans, start to skip out on their payments. Payments. Come up for me, please, because this is obviously bothering me. It's it's really making me feel anxious, like fully chest heart pounding. I can feel almost like a little bit <clears throat> childlike, a little bit like I want to kick all my toys out of the pram type feeling that, but I don't know if it's just a it's unfair or whether it's whether it's deeper than that in maybe some area of like my self-worth I can't get to it it's, it's interesting it's like I, I lifted off that idea that I carry their burdens and now I feel more in a neutral place of you know you're investing something just pay your bill yeah I keep getting shown as well like I got a speedy ticket yesterday I didn't get it yesterday, I got it on Eden's birthday. I was rushing home for a party and clearly got pipped by her. And I thought to myself, another bill, I'll just pay that. It's a pain in the ass, it's not, you know, it's like, oopsie. There's not a nice feeling getting caught speeding, but I will always pay my bills, you know? And, and maybe, okay, oh, Georgie, what is it? It's really getting to me, eh? Was there a time that you, you couldn't pay your bills and you, you've done it to oh, someone else? Oh, always my entire life. Yeah, like... So maybe it's that guilt that yeah. you've done it to someone else? In there somewhere you need to get rid of the guilt? Do I feel guilty that I can't get them to switch? I don't think I feel guilty that I didn't pay things in the past because ultimately I always did pay them. Maybe that's it. Like, even in the darkest of times, like even if it was on a deferred payment instalment or through credit debt or like I always paid and we have been to the you know well we lost our home for god's sake like was it because these people they're actually big big energy leakers because if you're 
you want to help as many people as possible. It feels like a massive energy leap. Yeah, but you can't help everyone because they ultimately have to help themselves, don't they? Mm. Being able to switch off that emotion of, yeah, like it's down to them and not, nothing in the course and nothing in the program is, it's them, not you. Like if they actually went through it, like you said, it's half the people you've seen, they're actually using your content. And I think that's probably where it's all. Mm, that's why I don't think it's a self-worth piece because I think I've, I've gone over that hurdle. Mm, okay, so I'm really gonna have to sit with this, eh? Because it's like, I feel like it's part, it's, it's part of the business too. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to step into this place where I'm cold. Maybe there's an element of, yeah, but you've always wanted to help people. Are you then going again, going back on that pledge to just help people but it's like it's creating an energetic block it's like i can feel the lack of flow and i know the flow is just so important it says the truth and your authentic truth which isn't people that aren't ready is it is people that are ready to okay so you're getting somewhere there because that's just made it go off again and that's what's happening in these people's you know they're i think they're reaching something in themselves and it's a block and okay so it's not that they're unwilling to go over it, it's that they're throwing it back at me. That's what's coming up now. It's the feeling of when they hit that wall, instead of seeing it as part of the journey, going through it, doing the work, keeping paying, they're like, here you are, chucking it. Like, this is not immediately, obviously they are misaligned or just don't want to do it or whatever. And, and then the minute we say, no, you have to pay, then they chuck it. So it's like, yeah. And that's the, the piece, isn't it? Like, how do you get people who want to avoid these feelings past that point to be like, oh, actually, yes, this is a benefit. And that's what the coaching is and the course is, isn't it? It's bringing all those things up to the surface that people don't want to deal with, but they have to deal with, but it's getting that message across. Feelings, the blessing and the curse in your business, in your life, as you've seen, with Vicky, Carmen and Judith, this journey of progress brought up a lot of feelings and a lot of feelings that were not really to do with the present moment or the present challenge that you're going through. It's just that something about what you're going through triggers old feelings from the past. The thing about your feelings is that they define who you are and who you are defines how you show up the decisions that you make. If you are truly a light leader and you do want to go out there and, and change the world, you have to get to grip with the feelings that you're experiencing in the moment. You have to allow them, however sick, scared, insecure they make you feel. This beautiful process of allowing emotions to rise, allowing yourself to be the Atlantean that walks into that city to go through the journey of facing that emotion, learning to be okay through that emotion and, and, and learning that emotions lesson allows you to become neutral to that emotion. So that whatever's showing up in your, your reality doesn't trigger old feelings from the past. Because if you are living through these old feelings of the past, you're basically just recreating the past in the present moment. And is that the light leadership that you want? Do you want to be able to, to go out there and shine a torch down onto a path for people to follow? Or do you want to become a lighthouse? Okay, so it is coming, I'm getting like a buzzing. It's like a buzzing. It is related to how they, the carrying the burdens thing interesting it's almost like well if i go to them and say fuck it then fuck off it's like i'm just dropping them even i don't know so at the end of the day as well it's, it's a two-way relationship it's not you just carry the burden they also have to commit and once they've committed the finance then they get the person that's right that's really powerful what you just said there because that's exactly it. it's like even though it's not about me carrying their burdens i am their coach but they have to commit like they have to 
take action. They have to not just give up. Something about the giving up, eh? The giving up you have- and, and then the narcissism around it, like the, it's your fault. You know, it's like, you seemed like a good energy and now you're a horrible person. I thought, no, I'm just, I was trying to help you and you came to me. I think I'm in crisis because it's like, actually they are the people that need the help. They almost remind me of my brother a little bit, but then I'll go broke if I try to help. If that's what you get when you try to help them, you know, it's like, I can't run a business where people don't pay. And I do give so much out. I mean, I do give such a lot for free. Like I was thinking about my time that I give, you know, even to the accelerators on top of what they get, you know, extra sessions, stuff through the post and all the training that I do and all the emails. I like there's there's gifts in all of them. And it's like, but if somebody's looking at something and they've got this thing inside that just tells them that they're a victim to the world and nothing's going to change and they're waiting. Ooh, they're waiting for the silver spoon. Like the entitlement. No, no, one, no one, no one even said thank you. Like, oh, thanks for offering. Or nobody inquired. Is there an issue? They just came at me angry. <laughs> like, you said that there would be a, and I was like, wow. Like, there's also like we had that lady come in to the accelerator, and she gave us a link to her podcast, and it didn't work. And I just went back to her and said, oh, I just checking in. The link doesn't work because it's asking for emails and we've got to subscribe. It was like, where's the free link? And then she sent it back. People just want to hear what they want to hear half the time. That's very true. And that's, look how grown up she looks. Oh, hey. trousers. Have a nice day, a trip. Oh, a trip. Otani Wainuku. It's not us, it's Otani Otani Wainuku. <laughs> hey, good girl, listen to your teachers, okay? Don't do anything that you're not supposed to. Just me too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jay's hair. <laughs> I love it. Go and sort your um, teeth in your hair. Who's that? That's Georgie. Oh. Wow. Okay, so to go forward, because we can't just like, that's the energy leak as well, isn't it? Just giving, 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 giving. Try, oh, sorry, he's trying to get this perfect. And, and then people are just... I think you just said it before, they'll hear what they want to hear and they'll see what they want to see. So you can say anything, like half the time they come to you, you know, I was like, yeah, but there was a whole other sentence around that as well. Like, it was like there was before and after that piece. And you're just like, but whether well, they say you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Like that's basically the oldest saying that there is. And I think people then when they're angry, it's easier to take it out via email, isn't it? Because it's not personal. Whereas I think if you got face to face with them, I know it's hard. Or if Joe or I got face with it, then it's very hard to then not pay. I've watched other coaches do it. I don't know how they're getting people to pay money. Uh, maybe they just have a huge churn. <laughs> but there were 60 people that signed up to the book, even though they got to the page and there wasn't a coupon code. They paid for the book. I feel like it's a business thing, like it's a branding thing, it's a, a company energy thing, it's like making it a nice place for you, making it a nice place for me, having good clients, because there's a massive difference. There's this experience in the accelerator where it's just epic, right? And then there's this shit underneath and it's like, I'd give it up, I'd give it away. I'd walk away from my business some days because of it. It feels that yucky. I think something that I'm, I'm struggling to compartmentalize is that I was just as a child put in a lot of situations I should never have been put into and growing up I've carried this feeling like you know I just got I got it wrong all the time and I made bad decisions and whereas revisiting some of these memories it's like I would never put my child in that situation why was I on my own why was I why was I not with my parents you know all of these questions and I I can't I don't blame my mum and dad because they just weren't they weren't in a place to but I've carried this belief for 40 years that in all of these different places I just got it wrong and it's starting to dawn on me and this is the piece that I'm working with in my own inner work at the moment is that feeling of innocence and purity On 
November 10th, 2021, I accidentally took my dog's life. This has been a journey of deep grief across the last couple of years. But at the beginning of this year, 2023, I really thought I had closed circle on. I really felt like I'd come to some place of place of peace, some place of forgiveness. But as the months rolled on, I found the grief getting worse and worse. <laughs> I wish I could help you. But do you think you need to forgive yourself then? I realized that I didn't feel that innocence and purity like there's still a level of like um because I took his life for you know it's... I think I had a breakthrough last night because in my visions like he's always been just away you know like whereas last night he came and he rolled that's okay you go away I like it I think if you think about in what you teach others is like the message and the learning and you think you, time is a healer and with everything you've written and going through your book that you know maybe it was Benny's time to leave this universe to teach you and I just feel like he waited in that car and I know, I even know, like, that he is a dog and he probably doesn't even think about those things, but... And maybe it does trigger this whole piece of, like, was that what I was doing when I was a kid? Was just, like, waiting for somebody to come back? Like, I know, like, it's just something, there's something that's... And it's being rooted up by these people and I can't, I can't get my fingers on what it is. But just sit with it and just don't force it just I hate, allow... I hate the grief I hate I hate missing him he's always with you he, he is always with me like when I get what you say like it's a star crossed path like I trust that and I trust I trust it with Benson too but some days it just doesn't make any easier that there's like a you know, mountain-sized horse missing from my life, and his his love like was unconditional. I know, I know that, but did I break some piece of trust because I didn't go to him? I didn't go to him. I didn't even think to go to him, <laughs> and I don't know why. Like. I don't know why I didn't know he was in that car. But as you've said to me, the why questions are the ones that are the hardest. The why questions are never going to give you the peace that no. you deserve. The why questions make us sad. Because <laughs> grieving is part of life and it just means that you loved someone or something. Unfortunately, that's the price of love sometimes, isn't it? Grief. Sometimes you just need to cry. I, I know that there's some connection between... It feels like it's something to do with love. Like, it seemed like such a profound awakening for me that, wow, you know, love can be unconditional. You can just be an innocent child, you know, having your own children and realising... <laughs> They're just, there's not, there's, they just don't know. And then I have struggled in the last year to really remember and I guess process all of the times, like all of the things where it was like, no wonder I carried a burden, you know, of, because I felt like it was, I was being asked to be an adult in a child's body, you know? And it's affecting how I'm seeing people. It's affecting how much I'm giving and willing, you know, to be taken advantage of, right? It's like they say people, it's, it should be a black and white. You bought something, pay for it. <laughs> Whereas it hasn't been 
it's not how I want to go forward. And I have to draw some sort of line under somewhere because the energy leak is just huge. Unconditional love and light leadership. What can those two things have to do with each other? And how might your inability to unconditionally love yourself be blocking unlimited ab abundance in your life? At the beginning of this year, I, I channeled a message from Spirit that a miracle would be brought into my life. I have to be honest that immediately my mind went to material abundance. Would this be the breakthrough, the break free to that million dollar line? I had no idea that the miracle would be lots. Huge lots. As I processed what I was going through at this time that you're watching in the documentary, I took a two full week social media blackout. I took myself off away and cut off all of the crutches to numb how I was feeling. When you run a business from your phone, it means that your phone is at the end of your arm constantly. And I got into this pattern of, of distraction. I learned a lot about myself in those two weeks. And on the last day of my blackout, I went down onto the sand. <laughs> I looked out onto the waves. said out loud to Benny, my dog. I'm letting you go. I'm letting you go now. And as I looked down onto the sand by my feet, as I said this, this beautiful shell that appeared in the waves. And it was one of those shells that the middle had washed away. It was just an outline of a shell. And I picked up the shell and I looked at it and I had a profound message from it. <laughs> that if we're really to become that lighthouse, we actually have to become a transparent window for divine to shine through. We have to let go of everything that is clinging us to the past, that even attaches us to anything at all. And we have to become unconditional love. We have to become the ability to look on every single moment as a beautiful gift. And to do that, we have to free all of the parts of ourselves <laughs> into love all of the parts that make us feel insecure, all of the parts that make us feel ugly, all of the parts that made us believe we did something wrong, all of the parts that have made us feel unlovable. You have to free all of them into love. And when you begin to free all of them into love, you begin to bring all of yourself into every single moment of your life and you become love. You become pure love. You become the highest frequency of love. And that's what happened <laughs> from that point. I felt so whole, so unbelievably whole. And magic started to appear in my life. People, <laughs> experiences. <sighs> the last couple of months have been absolutely wild. The proof that you can magnetize anything that you want into your reality, anything. Everything that you set your mind to in intention, you merely have to set your mind to it intentionally, intentionally and hold on to that intention because it will manifest. It will manifest. It manifests from you. 
you are God. And if you are a light leader, that comes with big responsibility. My most recent journey has really been learning how to step into that dynamic receptivity with divine will. If I am that transparent window for divine to shine through, then what is my purpose? What am I here for? It's not the material things that I used to think it was. Big house, the flashy travel, even the financial freedom, none of it feels important anymore. What feels important is to keep stepping forward as a loving leader, as a woman who embodies her divine feminine power, but also her beautiful masculine power in balance, in divine union, to be able to stand up for what I believe in, not be afraid, and to always trust that everything is happening perfectly in the perfect moment so that I can use my voice, so that I can have radical expression, so that creative expression can be my way forward, so that my business matches who I am on the inside, everything that I love, and I can bring that frequency into my world in every single moment because I know that beyond anything else, frequency will be what shifts the planet to more abundance. Every single one of us learning how to sit in the uncomfortable feelings that we have, embrace the mystery of this life, past lives, and all of the clutter that it is placing in that window frame so that you can release it, so that you can take the wisdom from your wounds and light a path for others to follow. It's because like you said, it's your value and you're like you said, you're feeling that burden, but it's not your burden and it wasn't your burden as a child. I do intellectually know that. I just feel like I, I still feel like I'm carrying it. I feel like, I don't, well, I, I don't know. We're stepping up, aren't we, again in the business on a fucking huge level. But obviously I saw how I've been picky and not pitching to people and not pulling them across the line because I've been afraid of them not paying. And that's not, I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's finding the innocence of a, you know how my kids will just look at anyone and they will trust them. I feel like I lost that part of my soul a really long time ago. Yeah. I think I'm getting somewhere now. And I don't trust myself either still, I don't think, because of Benson. And again, it comes down to pure, there's, there's, there was nothing intentional at all. You know, it was just an innocent mistake. It just was a fatal mistake. It was just a, you know, and again, I was in a situation I shouldn't have been. I put myself in it, tired not asking for help whatever yeah and I see I would never have used my voice and that's the thing like that's been a big breakthrough as I will say now I need help definitely but you do and you beat yourself up around it because like you said it's you just want them to think you will always be there for them and you haven't had that given to you so you also be kind to yourself yeah, it's just like, interesting when I had that breakthrough last night and it was like, you are innocent and it was mirrored. And it sounds strange, but I he, he visits me most nights and he never comes to me. He always is at the end of the driveway or partway down the field and he just looks and he's always dashed off. And then last night, you know how they do, they come and roll and like had his big jowly face and my face and nudged up and and I think that's what's happening in real life is I'm I'm getting these people that are just mirroring an energy from me of something that around 
I think if I can shift, they will shift, actually. I do. I believe that. <laughs> and that the processes won't even matter. It'll be just like, it'll be just a different reality because something in here still needs to move into a place of something around the innocence and trust. And it's something around like taking things as they are rather than with that burden. I'm gonna I'm gonna um feel into it. Thank you. Right. Who who knew fucking payments could take you down such a rabbit hole of fucking trauma <laughs> and loss <laughs> and get, grief and missing your dog. <laughs> I get tricked at the most random things, and I think that's what it is, isn't it? Because it's that's that's teaching us something and it's coming up for something like Bits is still here, Skylar's Bits. I know. I know. Oh. We, think, we think that Benny's come back as Sky because she does the weirdest things that he used to do, like sit in the middle of our road and trust. In Carmen's episode, you saw her journey to trusting that spirit has her back. Ultimately, the next level of your soul advancement, what I call the soul pilgrimage, is to understand that spirit is not outside of yourself. You have to learn to trust yourself. And this began the most beautiful journey, very recent journey of really exploring this within myself and coming to this place of understanding that we all have an unlimited source of creative power that actually can be quite scary. That maybe somewhere within ourselves we don't we don't trust the responsibility of this power and this just matches the reflection in our external reality. We think that we don't trust others, but actually we don't trust ourselves. If you're in a place in your journey where you are ready to take your light leadership to a galactic level of success, but also alignment, feelings of bliss, creative expression like you have never had it before, doing things in your business that light you up so much every day that your business begins to feel orgasmic. The next step in your soul pilgrimage is to trust yourself. And at this point in this beautiful documentary, as you have now seen the journeys, the stories of Carmen, Vicky, Judith unfold, as my own story has been laid bare for you today, before we now start to bring this series to a close where you will see the wins, the transformation, the changes that happened with my clients, Vicky Carmen and Judith, because they chose to take the journey of publishing a book that, like I say at the beginning of this documentary, puts you into a ritual of initiation for the sales and opportunities that you want because you have to face yourself because you have to sit in the discomfort of what you feel because there's no way out when you sign your signature on that line of publishing when you've made your investment the only way out is through the next step in your soul pilgrimage the next part of your ritual of initiation is to trust yourself if you would like to take that journey, there is a link down in the description of this video below where you can book a call to talk to me, to share your story with me, to help me to see the light leadership that you want, the lighthouse that you want to become, and for me to help you to see some of the blocks that perhaps you don't, that really are blocking this radical expression, this full light. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of a baptism of fire and i will see you in the next one